Hey there everyone, this is Danielle playing some more Spyro the Dragon. Last time we did the hardest level in the game, Treetops. Uh, this time we're probably going to do the boss, Metalhead, who is just up there. Uh, and we're also going to probably get the rest of the treasure that's here in the homeworld. We did already get a decent amount of stuff in the homeworld. You can see we're at nearly 200, it's out of 300, so yeah, we're getting close-ish. Just going to wait for this guy to do his electricity thing. I'm going to kill him, get his gem, there we go. So yeah, we've got a bit of swamp crossing to do here. Oops. Don't fall in the in the in the swamp because it's bad for you. It's very bad because you're a dragon and you're made of fire and swamps are made of water. There's a key over there which I want, so I'm gonna get that. Uh, I think I need to get a bit higher up to glide to it though. So here's how you get to Metalhead. Uh, we won't be doing Metalhead yet. I think we'll finish off the home first and then come back. I believe we already have all we need to continue. Oh, much better now that so many dragons have been rescued. Yeah. Jump in the balloon. Are you ready to the next go? world is Dreamweavers. We're not going there yet, though. Uh, we'll be going to Macromedia Dreamweavers world later. Once we finish off this one. Except for the flying level. I might give the flying level a look, but I, d I, just, I don't, I don't want to bother with them. Alright, let's glide over there and get that chest now. There's also a key which we can use to unlock that locked chest we saw a little while ago. Which is always nice. Good to unlock a locked chest or three. There we go. And I believe that should be just about everything. Give or take. Let's have a look. Yep, 300 out of 300. 100% level complete. So the home's done. Now let's go fight Metalhead. And we'll take maybe a look at the flight level. Again, I just, I don't like flight levels in this game. <sighs> we'll, we'll, we'll probably give it a shot, but it's not like we need the treasure. We have plenty. Uh, I'll give it a try, maybe, but I just, I just don't like it. Anyway, uh, Metalhead um, is the boss. I believe it's based on the electric floor thingy that we were seeing with those annoying guys in the home world and a couple other places. Uh, I don't super remember though. Anyway, here we are. And the Beast Maker's boss. All of these bosses are optional except like the final boss in the final world, by the way. Um, they're worth doing generally because, you know, you get stuff, but they're not required. You don't have to beat them for progression or anything, which is kind of cool. Uh, so we've got more of these, uh, like, monkey whatevers, but they've been enhanced with metal armor so that they're more annoying. Uh, which is pretty clever, considering we're a dragon and for some reason metal is immune to fire, even though that doesn't make a whole lot of sense, as I've discussed previously. So yeah, it's still those little monkeys we're seeing in the other level, but now they're wearing metal which makes them fireproof because reasons is this vent gonna do something like help me get up there doesn't look like it i don't super remember this level uh... even how most of the bosses aren't all that memorable in this game dr shemp is the most not dr shemp the the one that's the, you know, the, the sheep on the stilts, that's Toasty. Toasty's the most memorable, in my opinion. Well, I forgot the name, so, you know, take that with a grain of salt. <laughs> but, like, in terms of design, I think Toasty's pretty memorable, and the others aren't quite so interesting. And some of them are a bit questionable, too. Such as Dr. Shem. Ah, 
Ow. This is trans misogyny. Okay, there's a bunch of uh, brain chickens around that I can I can take take out. There we go. Plenty of brain chickens for everyone. Let me go down here. Hello, dragon. Okay, so here's the boss. Siddiqui. Metalhead is all charged up to meet you. Get it? Attacking the power pole should disrupt his power supply. Okay, that's the only dragon in this level. As usual, there's just one that tells you something about the boss. Uh, I think to get that other treasure up there, we have to do the boss first, and then that gets us a bit more height, so we can reach that other stuff. So let's go do the boss. So yeah, here's the boss. Uh, you can break the power poles when they're not zappy by charging through them, but if they're zappy then they'll hurt you, so you gotta watch out for that. The boss is big and made of metal, so you can't charge him. Gotta watch out for that. Ow. There we go. So yeah, you just break all the power poles and the boss leaves, basically. So it goes to the next room and you can follow. Pretty much all the bosses in this game work like that. They just sort of go away and you're like, where are you going? And they're like, oh, follow me, we can fight some more. It's a bit silly. Uh, I guess it's a pretty good view of the next room. Uh, possibly the room after, I don't really remember. Okay, yeah, it's this one next. So you just gotta break all these poles, it's pretty simple. As long as you keep moving, you should be fine. And, you know, don't charge them when they're obviously electrified. Well, um, okay then. Metalhead? More like Metal Dead. Get it? Because he's dead. Because I defeated him. I can use this whirlwind here to go up here and look for some more loot. Look how much loot there is. Oh my goodness. Tasty, tasty loot. Accidentally pressing the L button so you roll to the side. Always a good time. Um, I guess I can glide over there? Yeah, I can. I'm just doing it wrong. There we go. Okay, then we can go back and check out the areas we didn't do before because there's some extra collectibles and stuff that we want. Like this gem, for example. And these treasures over here. Uh, I guess we want to go to that place with the other power poles that we didn't visit earlier? I don't really understand why there's another area if we already defeated the boss. It's a bit weird. Again, this part of the game is less beloved from my childhood and therefore less remembered because I wasn't very good at the game. Um, yeah. Oh, okay. I was just looking at it from the wrong angle. I thought it was a different room, but it wasn't it was the same room. Okay. Okay. I get it. Um, so how do we get up there then? Hmm. I assume... Something we did later on gave us enough height to get to where we want to be. Let's just keep charging through here. Charge, 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 charge. Let me see. Yeah, this room doesn't really have access to the other stuff. But maybe if we can glide from above that first room? Let's have a look. Because these stairs lead to directly above. Uh, the first 
section. There must be a reason for that, right? Mm, it doesn't seem to help me, though. I am confused once again. <laughs> Maybe there's something else over this side that I didn't notice before. Yeah, let's quickly look around. Alright, so there's the exit. Uh, that's just an exit. There's nothing else in there. But we can climb up here in order to get out the top here. Um, oh, hello. There's something over there. Can I get enough height to get over there? Hmm. Find the waterfall. Of course. Why wouldn't there be stuff behind the waterfall? Um, how do I reach it, though? I've beaten the boss, but it's just like figuring out how to reach all the stuff that I can get now that I've beaten the boss is much harder. Uh, can I go in there? It doesn't look like it. It looks like there's an opening, but I can't go through. It's kind of weird. Uh, I can't burn these, even though they're clearly made of wood. Which is a bit annoying. Um, what am I missing here? Because I can clearly see some loot over there and I can't see a way to reach it. Yeah, and Sparks is circling it even, so hang on. Is there like a lower passage behind the waterfall? I don't think so. Hmm. Maybe the other waterfall? Hmm, doesn't look like it. Get there. Oh, hello. Hang on, there's some platforms over this side. Okay, okay, this is pretty easy actually. <laughs> Just gotta go around to you. Around to you. There we go. Okay, um, do I have a key? Because there's a locked chest here. I don't think I have a key. Okay, um, hmm. The actual boss battle was super easy, but all this other stuff is kind of. Proving more challenging, <laughs> which is weird. Uh, okay, let's head back this way. So I'm gonna look around here. Maybe there's a ledge I can get to that I didn't spot earlier. That can help me reach some stuff. I can get that high pretty easy. That doesn't help me reach what I want to reach though. Hmm. Pretty sure this isn't high enough to reach that ledge over there. Yeah, it's much lower, so that won't work. Hmm. Hmm. I am confused. Uh, I really don't want to look at a guide again, because I just did that, but... Um, if I can't figure out what I'm missing here, it may be necessary. Which is very sad. Um, I can't see anything in here that would help. What about here? So we've got this little staircase here, which I can climb. Is that something? There's like a ledge there, but I don't think that's real. I think it's just decorative. Uh, it's very nice to decorative, but it's, I don't think it does anything. Okay, so that lets you get up to here. Um, but that's really far away from where I want to be. So it doesn't actually really help that much. Maybe there's another platform here that leads back? I don't think so, though. Let's see if the map, the map gives me any hints. Yeah, this room's just a big room. Uh, then you have this part, which curves around like this and lets you go up here. Um, it's not really suggesting much to me that I didn't already know. It's just that one ledge over there. Um. Hmm. Just don't seem to be able to reach for some reason. Is there anything out here that helps me? Like a side ledge or something? Doesn't look like it. 
some little platforms and stuff out there, but I don't think they're like, useful or anything. They're on the map, so I get the feeling they don't do anything. Can I burn that wood? No. Wood is not a burnable substance, you fool. Yeah, I can see like a life up there and some gems and stuff, so at least there's a way to get up there. I don't know what it is. I think there's something up there too. You can see like a yellow thing. Hmm. But I have no clue how to reach any of it. <laughs> also, it's weird that this boss ending had two phases. All the others have had three. You know, you can see there's some treasure and stuff up there. Obviously, I want it, but I can't figure out how to reach it. Hmm. Come around here. It doesn't really help because it goes slants down like that, so you don't gain any height. Hmm. I assume it's something at the beginning here that I'm not seeing. It looks like there's like a room behind here somewhere, but... Is that a platform? It is. Um, hello, what's, what's happening here? Oh my god! <laughs> well, I found something, um... Okay, so you have to figure out that there might be a little opening there. That you can't really see because of the angle. Um, hmm. Yeah, these definitely have actual keyholes in them, so it's a little annoying that you're not supposed to use a key to open them. Okay, there's the key. The jam is supposed to use to open that other chest. It also has a keyhole, but it looks a bit different. Okay, now I'm gonna climb back up here. That doesn't necessarily help me get to the other places I need to get to. Hmm. Hang on, there's a whirlwind here. What does this take me? <gasps> okay, okay. So, yeah. The trick is, you've got to look at this, that down there from the right angle, notice there's an opening, and then it becomes, like, trivial. Um, it's a shame we didn't notice that sooner. Okay, so you grab that, you grab that, you grab that, then you go get the key. Well, you have the key, but you use the key to open that other thing. And then, that's everything. Yay. <laughs> so yeah, the map does help actually, because you can see that there's an area out there that doesn't seem to exist. If you don't know, you can sneak through that gap there. Let's switch it back off though. There we go. Now we go over here. We go over here, because this is where the lock chest is. And we give it a key. That's everything. Yay! Ah! Waterfalls! Ugh. Okay, so we are effectively done with this world now. Uh, whoops. Because we've gotten everything in the home world, gotten everything in all the levels, so we're ready to advance to, uh, Dreamweavers. To, to Macromedia Dreamweavers world, which is exciting. Um, I guess I'll have a quick look at the flight, because this one's... Uh, only about 20 minutes, um, so I'll go back and have a quick look, but I probably won't try to do it or try to get perfect score anyway. I, I, I'll, I'll give it a couple of tries, but I won't stress too much about it because I don't like flight levels. Uh, anyway, this one's done. Uh, just get a couple of those to heal me, heal me up a bit. The easiest way to get back is probably to go this way. Uh, because that gets you onto this structure that leads all the way back to there's terrace level. Uh, the actual place we need to go is over there, so let's go like that general direction. There we go. We can't fast travel there just yet because, yeah, reasons. Anyway, we jump down this hole, and here's Wild Flight. Okay, so we'll see how this goes. I don't really expect to do super well because I don't like the flights, but we'll see how much stuff we can get and how well we can do and 
We'll give it maybe a few minutes, and then we're going to move on to Dreamweavers. Because Macromedia Dreamweavers is, sounds pretty cool to me. Well, that's a great beginning. Um, let's free, we could, well, give it a couple more tries. Um, there we go. This one is evidently quite a bit harder than some of the earlier ones. Which makes sense, but because they were already quite hard, it's not good for me. <laughs> if you crash into something, you stop flying, but you can press a uh, jump and then you'll start flying again, so you're sort of okay, but sort of not. So if you touch the water at all, that's just the end, which is super annoying. I'm not sure what the ideal route is here. I'm just kind of flying around arbitrarily a little bit. Looking for stuff that I can blow up or fly through or blow up and then fly through. In a dungeon in the place that I banished me to. Ah! Yeah, yeah, this is gonna be a thing. I haven't actually run out of time yet because the like ground is so insta deathy in this area. Um, granted, they were all above water like this, but it's proving more of a problem in this one than it did before. God. Okay, well, let's give it a couple more minutes, and then I'm gonna cut this off and head for the next world. Okay, yeah, I'm, I'm gonna call it. I might come back, but I probably won't. I didn't get any treasure in that one, by the way. You have to get at least one complete group of something to actually get anything. And I got seven of eight of various things a couple of times. Anyway, um, I'm just going to advance on to the Macromedia Dreamweaver's world. It's not too tricky to get to. Uh, I'm just going to go this way a little bit. Get the Balloonist. You can fast travel to get to other worlds, but um, because we haven't been there yet, it won't be available, so we've got to go find the Balloonist instead. Fortunately, it's pretty easy. You just come through here now a whirlwind here to get you up to where Metalhead is. Uh, I think that it shows up. I'm not sure when that shows up. I guess just when you come to this spot on the other side. Oh, I feel much better now that jumping the balloon. Are you ready to go? Yeah, take me to Macromedia Dreamweaver's world. Let's have a look. So again, we won't do too much in this video. Once we get there, we're just going to have a quick look.
Here we are. So yeah, this is Dreamweaver's world. It's kind of like Magicraft as well, but more fairy tale. Uh, that's a little mushroom jumping around there that will give you a thing. What's it called? Butterfly. Butterfly. Yeah. And yeah, there's like fairies and stuff around. And there's a lot more bottomless pits. Um, Magic Craft has had mostly ground. Not too many places you had to glide. Here you gotta glide a lot. Um, so just gonna grab a couple gems here and then we're gonna end the video. Just to give you a bit of an idea of where we are. Yeah, you can see those people keep getting resized. You gotta wait till they're the right size. Um, to be able to hit them because, you know, they're big. You can't charge them, but they're wearing metal, so... Go wait till they get small again. Uh, there's a level there, Dark Passage. There's a little whirlwindy thing here. Works a little bit differently to some of the others, but it's basically the same idea. So yes, that, that, that uh, gem thing over there is actually zapping them to change their size. That one up there. I believe you can lure it to shoot certain things if you're standing in the right spot. Doesn't seem to be firing though, so I'm not sure if I'm doing it wrong or... I think maybe you have to get up there yourself in order to do that one. Anyway, yeah, this is Dreamweaver's world. It's the last regular world in the game. The final world is like the final boss area and the hub is kind of like a um, Crash Bandicoot hub, where it's just a room with doors around the sides. I believe we already have whatever we need to advance, so well let's check. Well done, Spyro. I hope you know what lies in store for you. Nasty's world is not the friendliest place you'll ever find. Are you ready to go? No, I'll stay here. It's just called Nasty's world. I thought it was called something better. On the wiki it said Nork Nexus, which is pretty funny. Uh, anyway. Yeah, so that's it for this video. Next time we're going to do some of the levels here. Probably Dark Passage first, because it's right there. Pretty easy to find. Um, but yeah, that's it for now. Thanks for watching!